Thank you, organizers, for a splendid start to Toxicon 14. Yesterday, I listened uh, spellbound to the key presentations on various aspects of toxicology, and we are all eagerly awaiting as to who will be the winner of the inaugural Dr. Andre Award for the best presentation. That's for later. I'm very happy to be here, Toxicon 14, our own institute, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, and uh, the team that is uh, conducting the conference, perfectly flawless. So I hope the same thing continues in the subsequent sessions also today and tomorrow. I am here to talk on initial toxicology investigations in a case of poisoning, something that is not given much importance, unfortunately, in many of our textbooks. And it's a very practical kind of uh, situation where a doctor who is uh, managing a case of poisoning wonders as to what should he order with regard to toxicology investigations aside from the routine biochemistries. We all know that uh, today the scenario is such that analytical toxicology has become an important adjunct to the management of poison patients. And we are happy to note that analytical toxicology laboratories are being set up by hospitals across the country. We'll come to the details of uh, those later tomorrow in my presentation on the poison control centers in India that I listed in WHO's website. But uh, before we progress to the discussion on toxicology testing, I must emphasize that uh, as always, the cornerstone of management of the patients who are poisoned is still intensive supportive therapy. And uh, therefore, routine employment of expensive, especially expensive analytical techniques should be avoided. So this is a bit of a disclaimer at the beginning that I'm giving you because analytical toxicology laboratory is not something like a magic wand that you wave in the air and say, Abracadabra, I got the poison for you. Doesn't happen like that. So the attending physician must be judicious when he calls for investigations and he must exercise uh, Is there some problem? Somebody has uh, said something? Am I or if I'm not audible, please do interrupt me and tell me. I hope because I'm speaking through the mask as I've already indicated earlier. In case I'm not audible, please do raise your hand or uh, indicate it in the chat box or you can even interrupt me if you're not muted. We will move on to the next slide. And uh, I have talked about you know, the importance of analytical toxicology. I've given you a disclaimer that it is not a magic wand. So let us look at how you should really utilize the analytical toxicology laboratory in a poisoning case. When a poisoning case or suspected poisoning case is admitted to the ER and you are you know, drawing a blood sample already for routine biochemistries, it is always advisable to set aside a small sample of blood and urine uh, of the patient. Even if you have no immediate intention of analyzing for any toxicants, please set it aside, refrigerate it, and you never know. Subsequently, you may think that, uh, yes, this is uh, something which we should investigate with the help of a laboratory. And uh, when you draw a blood sample after treatment interventions have begun, naturally the toxicological you know, analysis will not be as valuable as a kind of fresh sample uh, that you had withdrawn at the time of admission, when nothing has been administered you know, by the drugs. So please do take this as a kind of maxim, a kind of big jump. Suspected poisoning case or confirmed poisoning case by your history, always draw a small sample of blood and possibly urine also, and set it aside for toxicological evaluation by the laboratory. If, for instance, a patient has an altered mental status, which is pretty common in serious poisoning, the attending physician can send blood and urine specimens straight away to identify CNS depressants or drugs of abuse or any, any other medications. But at the same time, indiscriminate ordering of these tests should not be done because they rarely provide clinically useful information. If, on the other hand, there is agitation or you know, CNS stimulation, naturally you should uh, order for CNS stimulants. But that we don't come across so commonly in a serious case of poisoning as CNS depression. And for a potentially suicidal patient, there are some you know, things that should be considered. 
which are common agents uh, that we see in such uh, you know cases. Like once its parents come out, increasing incidents of uh, involvement uh, in attempted suicide across the country. We have been noticing this for the last more than maybe 10 to 15 years. And of course, the routine you know, kinds of uh, agents that are suspected, like pesticides and all that, we don't have to even mention. But uh, I must emphasize that uh, pesticides in general, laboratory investigations in possible do not be really useful, except for maybe polyunestrates are saying in the case of organophosphate or carbonates. So those you know, poisons or xenobiotics, as the term is used today, uh, which uh, you know, will fetch some uh, beneficial you know, results by their toxicological analysis. They are listed here, carbon monoxide, lithium, theophylline, iron salicylates, digoxin or other cardioactive steroids. These are all you know, instances where laboratory investigation may be very helpful. So you should go by history, physical examination and bedside diagnostic tests. Moving on, uh, let me come to this very useful slide which will give you Clearly, the potential indications for seeking the help of a toxicology laboratory. Where should you seek help or when should you seek help? Number one, if you want to assess the outcome of a case of poisoning, that is prognosis, yes, an important indication. Number two, if you want to know about the toxicokinetics and mechanisms of toxicity of the agent concerned, yes, that is also an important indication, that is research. If there is an order, or I would politely say request, from law enforcement officer, like a police officer or magistrate, then again, that's a very important indication to undertake a water investigation. So we call that order. Number four, monitoring of treatment measures and their efficacy is also one of the indications, uh, quite important. And then uh, we have, of course, one of the most important indications, and that is identification of the nature of poison, which is, you know, often what uh, physicians think is the utility of a toxicology laboratory. Number six, to assess the seriousness of case of poisoning or severity. And finally, number seven, to confirm or exclude a particular agent as the cause for toxic exposure, all given very nicely by this mnemonic at the bottom of the slide, and that is promise. Please remember this. Each letter stands for a word. So we call this an acronym, an abbreviation that can be read off as a word. Prognosis, research, order, monitoring, identification, severity, and exclusion are all indications when you should seek the help of a toxicology laboratory in a suspected case of poisoning. Moving on uh, to another important and useful slide, and that is uh, those groups of poisoning cases where toxicological evaluation are especially useful. Very important to remember these four groups. We will start with the first group. Toxicity correlates very well with serum levels and specific drug therapy can be instituted. So it goes without saying, the examples listed here, you should really seek the help of a toxicology laboratory, not just for qualitative analysis, but also as far as possible for quantitative estimation. Examples include digoxin, ethylene glycol, lithium, methanol, paracetamol, salicylates, theophylline, all of which we actually do here in our own laboratory quite routinely. Number two, toxicity correlates closely with serum level, but only non-specific care is required. For example, barbiturates, ethanol, penicillin. Yes, quantitative as, you know, estimation is still useful, even though non-specific care is sufficient in many of these cases uh, to get the desired benefit. But still, I would say that an important you know, group as far as toxicological mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. Number three, toxicologic testing only serves to confirm fairly clear-cut clinical parameters of poisoning. You know, virtually evident as to what kind of poisoning it is. But still, you want to really go ahead and confirm mm -hmm. and take the help of a toxicology laboratory. And therefore, you have examples like cyanides, narcotics, organophosphates, and certain other related pesticides, tricycline drugs, and so on. And finally, number four, toxicity correlates poorly with serum level and only non-specific care is required. Where I would say that toxicology laboratory needs to only undertake qualitative analysis, if at all. Quantitative analysis is actually counterproductive because sometimes it can give rise to confusion since there is no correlation with clinical severity. So please don't go for quantitative estimation with regard to amphetamines, benzodiazepines, cocaine, and neuroleptics. I hope it's very clear. These four groups 
This is how you should really classify or categorize your patients with regard to toxicology investigations. Again, I uh, emphasize that most poisoned patients can be treated successfully without much contribution from the laboratory other than routine clinical biochemistries and hematology perhaps. So toxicology laboratory is not really uh, something that is essential all the time. And this is particularly true when there is no doubt about the poison involved. It's very clear, you know, by your history, circumstantial evidence, and so on and so forth, clinical picture. And when the results of a quantitative analysis is not going to anyway affect therapy, you should not really go about insisting on that. That will only, you know, impact on the financial problems of uh, the already suffering, you know, bystanders or relatives. So we should be really very careful in ordering unnecessary investigations. Finally, in those cases where an analytical toxicological investigation is deemed beneficial, an orderly progression is desirable in the performance of necessary tests and their interpretation. And that is given in the next slide in the form of a very convenient table where you have phases of analytical toxicological investigation. You have a pre analytical phase and the analytical phase. Under the pre analytical phase, you have to obtain details of current admission, including circumstantial evidence of poisoning results of biochemical and hematological investigations and then obtain patient's medical history and decide the priorities for analysis. In the analytical phase, interpret the results, discuss with the clinician looking at the patient, and if necessary, perform additional analysis. So this table is also very important when you're looking at analytical toxicological investigations. And uh, finally, I would like to give you a bird's eye view of uh, some of the tests that are routinely done by the analytical toxicology laboratory of our uh, poison control center here in Amrita. We have a tox screen panel, you know, for, you know, uh, we have poisons where you're not really certain what kind of poison you're dealing with. Uh, we have various stages, tox screen full, stage one, stage two. Then we have uh, another panel called the uh, substance abuse panel. Uh, next. That is uh, to do with, you know, Substance of abuse, we have uh, a comprehensive kind of kit. This is all mostly uh, qualitative, I say only. Much of the time, substance abuse screen, you need to do only qualitatively. If at all it's a case of overdose with any of the uh, substances listed here, then of course you'll have to proceed with individual analysis. We also have a number of group tests, and they comprise you know, the commonest groups involved in poisonings in India, like pesticides, heavy metals, alcohols toxic gases, sedatives, narcotics, and so on and so forth as they are listed here. This is just a kind of a representative you know, slide. There are many more groups uh, that we, of course, undertake. The full menu is available for all those who are interested. You can send it online. Now, aside from group tests, we also have, of course, individual tests. We can analyze you know, almost any kind of toxin or toxicant including all kinds of alcohols, all kinds of non-metallic chemicals, heavy metals, all kinds of pharmaceuticals, plant toxins. And we also undertake, you know, other kinds of assays like coal industries quite often, uh, as well as water sample for portability, adulterants or contaminants of food, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, if you may ask as to whether, you know, our laboratory is so sophisticated, we, we seem to be undertaking a lot of tests, and uh, sometimes people come here looking, you know, for a very, very sophisticated kind of laboratory and uh, so they get underwhelmed when they look at uh, actually what kind of tests that we do routinely. This is to show you that much of the time we rely on basic, simple tests because that is all that is required by a clinical toxicology laboratory. We are not talking about a forensic toxicology laboratory where the priorities are different. The priorities here are just, you know, trying to help the doctor guide uh, the doctor to you know manage a case of poisoning better. We are not here to prove or disprove anything in a court of law. And uh, the advantages of such uh, you know simple tests are listed in the next slide, and you can see very self-explanatory, inexpensive. Most of these tests easy to perform, quick, basic laboratory would do. Much of the time, easy to interpret the results. All these are very important points in clinical toxicology case. So when you start an analytical toxicology laboratory in a hospital for living victims of poisoning, don't try to impress people with a very high-end you know, kind of laboratory, which much of the time will actually become counterproductive because very expensive for, for the patient or the bystanders and very little really by the extra benefit. So basic tests are what we are looking at in a clinical analytical toxicology laboratory. Having said that, 
the question is often asked is sophisticated chemical analysis preferable at least you know in uh, the serious cases really not uh, for the reasons listed here some poisons may not be detected even by the most sophisticated instrument believe me but don't ask me for examples because that's a slightly a delicate question uh, and that's a kind of trade secret then there are of course cases where you no know, traces of random toxicants may be picked up leading to confusion that has happened in several high profile cases also then you have the uh, issue of lack of qualified or experienced staff because high end equipment requires experienced or really highly qualified staff and finally in red are written results are prone to incorrect interpretation i wish i had the time to go into one or two cases where this actually happened so with the regard to my presentation that is virtually all i'm closing with this final slide where you know i want to show you as to how we monitor what we are doing each year by we have a, a feedback from the clinicians as to how good we are how can we improve and you can see that over a period of time really we have improved to the extent where we can call ourselves uh, pretty useful in a case of poisoning for an average physician that is at the risk of posting but you know your figures here 2018 and 2019 if you compare look at how much difference it has made response time if you are looking at a scale from 0 to 100 is 80 concern about reliability of lab results 80 discussion about test results of labs are 75 that we can't help it because sometimes you know case of understaffing is there response for emergency for 75 overall satisfaction 80 and if i may say so 80 in a kind of ranking like this means excellent 0 to 25 is poor 25 to 50 is satisfactory 50 to 75 is good and 75 to 100 is excellent so we are happy where we are and i'm sure that you know this kind of thing can be replicated in hospitals in laboratories across the country and that is all that we want that more and more hospitals step into this field of analytical toxicology and help of living victims of poisoning thank you all very much for a patient listening and um, this is uh, all for from me for today